violent events, especially the Parkland, Florida shooting, which occurred a month ago today. Whether we've known someone who's been directly affected by a school shooting, or we've heard about them or seen them on the news, it's become an absolutely terrifying new normal. America has an average of 1.5 school shootings per week in 2018 alone. It almost seems inevitable that Parkland won't be our last. But this generation can and will be the generation to end gun violence. And we will continue to walk out and protest until we can feel safe in our schools and our communities. We should have the right to feel safe in the environment we learn in. Parents should, feel, should have the right to see their kids at the end of each and every school day. The children of our country should be prioritized over guns and over the dollars of the NRA. The survivors and people close to them should have the right to have their voices heard. They should have the right to be acknowledged as well as the real central issue, which is gun control. We're here because we've had enough. It was enough with Sandy Hook. It was enough with Columbine. And it was enough long before Parkland. But still, we see inaction and excuses made by legislatures and politicians every day. Sorry. We see them place money over the protection of children every day. The NRA pumps money into the pockets of those who are willing to ignore the importance of safety in our schools. We, as a student body, we as the future of this country, have to be the ones to speak out and protest until gun violence is ended. Personally, I haven't felt safe in school since the Florida shooting. And I believe we deserve to have that security back. That we deserve to learn without the fear of someone coming into our own school. Yes! Okay. Alright. It's kind of cold, so I won't be too long. The normalization of these shootings is unacceptable. The voices of students, victims, and their stories quickly disappear and slip through the news headlines in mere days. Before you know it, it's almost like it never happened until the next tragic shooting. This vicious cycle is created because you can't fix a problem with thoughts and prayers. We all need to take action, and that's why I'm so glad we're all here today with the support of our administration. What happened in Florida could have happened to anyone. Our generation is faced with a whole new type of anxiety and fear that past generations never had to deal with. Now we need to speak up and tell politicians what it's like to be scared to go to school, to freeze when the intercom interrupts class in fear of a lockdown. Maybe with this, in maybe with this insight, they can change their mindsets and pass laws that will save lives. Students have enough stress in school as it is. Stressing about whether they'll be able to go home to their families at the end of the day should not be one of them. Yet it's a reality for many. This campaign is led by teenagers. This is one of the rare times in history where teenagers are looking politicians in the eyes. They hear us and are intimidated by how powerful our youth is becoming. This is time to demand our safety back. Demand laws that should have changed long before, long before Parkwood. <laughs> I know I'm not the only one who feels change coming. The powerful students of Parkland started this movement. Now we need to keep it going. Fear has no place in school, so make sure this does not slip into the back of our minds to be forgotten. No matter what your political views are and where you stand on gun control, speak up and exercise your rights. Demand action, demand change, and demand it now. Hi. So now that we've had our introduction, I'm going to be introducing the first demonstration that we're going to go through. So right now you're going to be seeing 17 of our fellow classmates lead 17 lines testifying to the life and death of each victim in Parkland. You'll hear their name and age, but you'll also hear that some of them were champion athletes, some were nationally ranked scholars, some were popular and known to all, some were withdrawn and have just their family members' words left. Some died heroically saving the lives of their friends, and for some will never get to hear their final story. You might find this triggering or disturbing. I know I do, so I encourage everyone, please put your well-being first and foremost. But if you do choose to listen, 
whether to a tape online or in the halls of Congress or right here in front of me, I want to clarify that we're not, we're not trying to disturb you. These one-sentence summaries aren't even supposed to encapsulate entire lives. What they're trying to show is that whether they're unknown or famous, they were all human. They were all just like us, and none of them deserve to be reduced to sentences. And once we let in this tremendous tragedy, lives to turn to sentences in and beyond numbers and politics, maybe we can start seeing each other as human. And maybe that'll stir something deeper than the anger and the fighting we've been raised on. Something more ancient. Compassion. What Martin Luther King called the sword that heals. So listen and think about what your sentence would be. What your child's sentence would be if you're a parent. And... And when we finally ask Congress how much our, our sentences cost, hopefully we'll have created a tiny bit of change. So Scott Beagle, 35, was a geography teacher and the school's cross-country coach. And when he was opening the door for the students to hide, he was shot and killed, but the students survived. Meadow Pollock was an 18-year-old senior known for being confident and sassy. Her dad described her as his princess and the love of his life. The day before the shooting, she tweeted about her readiness to leave high school as she was planning to attend Lynn University in Boca Raton, Florida this fall. Nicholas Dwart was a 17-year-old senior and had just earned an academic scholarship to study and swim at the University of Indianapolis in the fall. In the past year as a captain of the swim team, he was known for his supportive attitude. He went from the middle of the pack to leading the team, according to his coach. Aaron Fias, a 37-year-old assistant football coach who had played football at Stoneham Douglas himself, raced to the scene in a golf cart when he heard the gunshot, exclaiming, that was no firecracker. He dove in front of three girls being shot at. Joaquin Oliver was a 70-year-old senior. He moved to the United States from Venezuela when he was three years old, and he became a U.S. citizen last year. He was buried in a Dwayne Wade jersey, honoring his love of basketball, and Dwayne Wade has dedicated the rest of his season to, jo to Joaquin and his family. Jamie Gutenberg was a 14-year-old freshman. She loved to dance, snuggle with her dog, and hang out on the beach. Her dad wrote, I am broken as I write this, trying to figure out how my family gets through this. Peter Wang, just 15 years old, dreamed of attending the United States Military Academy. Peter died wearing his Junior Reserve Officer Training Corps uniform while holding a door open for fellow students and staff to escape. Lou Coyer, a 15-year-old freshman, was a basketball player and huge NBA fan. At his funeral, his sister described his wide smile, his sense of humor, and his one true love, chicken nuggets. Gina Montalto, a 14-year-old freshman, was a member of the school state champion marching band in the Winter Guard. Those who knew her said she brightened any room she entered. Helena Ramsey, age 17, was smart and warm. She and her best friend were crouching in a Holocaust class when the shooter started fighting, firing through the window. As he entered, she said to her friend, grab a book, grab a book. The bl book blocked the bullets and saved her friend's life. Elena Petty, a 14-year-old freshman, was a member of the Junior Reserve's Training Officer Corps. An active member in her church, she helped to clean up the Florida Keys after Hurricane Irma. Everyone who knew her said they loved her. Kara Lawren, 14, loved the beach and Irish dancing. As her aunt wrote, while your thoughts are appreciated, I beg you to do something. Martin Duguay Aguiano, a 14-year-old freshman, was a very kind and outgoing person who loved to play soccer and watch Star Wars. His brother Miguel wrote, he was sweet, caring, and loved by all his family. Most of all, he was my baby brother. Alex Schachter, a 14-year-old freshman, played trombone in the marching band and played, his, and played basketball. His brother wore his, his number five Parkland basketball club jersey at a Miami Heat basketball ceremony in their honor. Alyssa Alhedef, a 14-year-old freshman, had played soccer since she was three years old. This year, she played midfield in soccer and won a debate championship. Carmen Shen Troop's friends described her as witty, intelligent, and incredibly sweet. A responsible hard worker, Carmen's national merit finalist letter arrived on the day she was murdered. Chris Hickson, 49 years old, was the beloved wrestling coach and athletic director at Parkland High School and was described as a great man with a great sense of humor. He is survived by his wife and his son with special needs. 
Our hearts are broken and continue to break every time we get news of another shooting, and it has gone on too long. Do not let this be another statistic. Let's do something. Hug your friends, hug your family. Make sure your loved ones know how much you appreciate them, because as we are all well aware, it can be taken away in an instant. We ask you to join us in a moment of silence for the family, friends, and fellow students who lost their lives in this tragedy. Thank you. So where are we now? We walked out, stood up, told our friends and ourselves and our families that we care, proved it even. We stood here and we chanted enough is enough, but I'm here to tell you that just walking, in out, just walking out isn't enough. It's just not. The NRA has a stranglehold on our country, and to break it, we're going to need some pretty radical change. The NRA has five million members, a targeted mobilization network, and millions of dollars in dirty money that they want to use to silence our voices. But we have the people. We are the people. And we have more power than we can fathom. We, young people aged 18 to 35, are the least represented age group in the polls. We represent 31% of the population, but only 19% of the electorate. And we overwhelmingly support gun control. Your voice is part of, your vote is part of your voice, your agent of change, your way to keep the people funded by the gun lobby out of office. If you are 16, you can pre-register to vote to ensure that when you are old enough, you will be able to make your voice heard. We will be running voter registration drives today and tomorrow during lunch so that you can do that quickly and easily. We're going to show our politicians that we care and that we're willing to make sacrifices to help save future lives. We're going to show them that every time that they take NRA money, the students of this country are going to be there to ask them why. Why are you sacrificing American lives? Why won't you take a stand? Our movement has already started to have effects, as companies big and small have divested from the NRA under pressure from activists like ourselves. Companies are always worried about their bottom line. They have to worry about losing business right away, so they tend to respond quickly to the world events. But our politicians have to care about our views too, even if they get the luxury of only having to do so every couple years. We are the politicians' bottom line, and we need to prove this to them. We need to be there every day, every event, to tell them that this is unacceptable. We are going to be the politicians' bottom line, and we're going to ensure that the people who want to give guns to the people who shouldn't have them are going to get voted out of office, and that we're going to replace them with people who are going to make change. Thank you so much for coming out today, everyone. I know it feels like your voice doesn't make a difference in Massachusetts sometimes. It's so easy to get complacent in a state that appears to be a utopia of progressive idealism compared to things on the federal level. I have a news flash for you, though. We have a long way to go. We don't even have red flag laws, laws that authorize the removal of guns from those who demonstrate, quote, a clear and present danger to attempt to kill or inflict serious bodily injury against identified victims. That means if, God forbid, someone like Nicholas Cruz, who owned firearms, lived in our state, the police couldn't take them. There are bills in the state house right now, H3610 and H3081, that have the power to change that. With the confirmation of a medical professional and the formal request of a family or household member, it would allow for an extreme risk protection order to be petitioned for. After a court hearing no more than two weeks later, a one-year protection order can be passed. This would prohibit the person from buying, owning, possessing, or receiving any guns. I urge all of you to call, email, or contact any of the members of this committee, who you can find online or on the pamphlets being handed out, and urge them to vote for this bill. I know that it sounds a bit scary, or weird, or even slightly embarrassing, but I can assume you that the difference your call makes is worth it. 
If you raise your voice to your elected rec representatives and tell them that you want change, they are obliged to listen. After all, we are the future, and soon they need our votes. The youth dictate that the future and the politics sorry, the youth dictate the future and the politicians are so scared for re-election because we use our voices so damn well. We don't play around. <laughs> don't just not call because you think they agree with you. They want to hear your voice anyway. They need to hear from the people. We can be the voices of change. Even though we don't have 1.22 million followers on Twitter like Emma Gonzalez, or even though we aren't president or any elected representative, we still have so much power. Remember, if we don't speak up, the status quo will, re will remain. So speak up. Your, voice your opinion no matter what, and together, our generation will change the face of the country for the better. So let's do it right now. Everyone has these orange sheets, right? There's numbers on the front and on the back. Pull out your phones, pick a representative, call. If the number's busy, call a different number. Let's do it all together right now. There's a script on the back. You can follow the script. All right, guys, I'm going to call the president of the Mass House right now. You have reached the office of Speaker Robin Delia. If you know your party's extension, please press 1 at any time during this message. To use our dial by name directory, please press 5. To leave a message in our general mailbox, please press 0 or remain on the line. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ava Gerstel. I'm here at the Northampton High School walkout. You can hear the crowd. Uh, so I'm a student at Northampton High, and I demand that you support comprehensive gun legislation because we've had enough of fear in our schools. I demand that you support Bill 3610 and 3081, which are in committee right now, stuck in committee, which establish extreme risk protective orders so we can feel safe in our schools. Thank you. All right, we're going to be headed back soon into school really quickly, but we want to just let you know that as long as you go back to your third period class, there won't be any punishment. But while we're all here and we have this great collective energy, I think we should do some more chants. What do we want? What do we want? Gun control! What do we want? Gun control! Gun control!